This is what recording ProRes log footage looks like on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And this is what it looks like shooting in normal HDR video mode on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. But wait, hold on a second, because log footage is not meant to be viewed on a display. It's meant to be a recording format that retains as much useful information as possible in the most efficient way. Now you may think that the normal HDR video mode looks better than the converted log footage that I just shot. However, the issue here is that by shooting in normal HDR video mode, I am sacrificing all of the creative control that I have over the image, and I'm basically stuck with the image that I shot. By shooting in log, I'm retaining the creative freedom to do what I want to do with the image in post-production instead of while I'm shooting. Now, Apple did not invent log encoding, and log encoding has actually been around for quite a while in the film industry. Every camera manufacturer has its own flavor or profile of log that they use, depending on the sensor and the image quality they want to produce. In order for Apple log footage to be properly viewed on a display, it must be tone mapped and transformed to the target display color space and gamma. All right, back in the office. So these days, there are actually quite a few ways to properly transform log encoded footage to our target display color space, which in this case, we're going to choose Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 because that's kind of the standard and that's what a lot of video editing programs default to. Each method of transforming our log image to a display color profile has its benefits and drawbacks. When I designed these LUTs, I had two goals in mind. I wanted them to be as easy to use and beautiful as possible. And I also wanted them to be technically accurate so that you can trust that the color science that you're getting in the camera is the best image that you can possibly make. That's why in this pack you also get a collection of pre-LUTs. These are intended to help you make small adjustments before it's converted into your display color profile, and they actually mimic the same adjustments that you would have made if you made those adjustments in camera. Premiere Pro is just now starting to support color conversions from different log profiles. However, right now they don't support Apple Log. So basically, if you're using Premiere Pro, you're going to have to find some LUTs to convert log to Rec. 709. However, as of right now, Apple has not released official Apple Log to Rec. 709 LUTs, and I'm not sure when that is going to happen. Final Cut Pro just released an update where it has a built-in conversion for Apple Log to Rec. 709. And typically, if you shoot the footage in the native camera app, it's actually going to convert it automatically when you place it into your project because it can read the metadata. The drawback here is that that conversion is actually kind of built into the clip level, and there are no global settings to change in Final Cut Pro to convert lots of footage other than simply selecting all and going to the info tab and converting everything. This method is easy, but the drawback is that I don't really love their conversion. I feel like it makes it very bright and saturated and you're kind of locked into their workflow when you do it this way because any adjustments you make are going to happen after the conversion LUT. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but many colorists and professionals like to perform exposure contrast, saturation, and white balance adjustments before the conversion in order to have access to as much of the data as possible. So if you wanna have control over the image processing pipeline in Final Cut Pro, then you're going to have to use LUTs because there is no other way to perform a color space transform on your footage. DaVinci Resolve is definitely the king of color workflows. There are many different workflows that you can use depending on your source footage, time, deliverables, etc. The easiest way to convert log footage to your display profile, Rec. 709 in DaVinci Resolve, is to use a color space transform. Before you do this, you wanna make sure that your project settings are properly set up. In our case, I'm going to set my timeline color space to Rec. 709 gamma 2.4 and I'm going to match that on my output color space. This way when we apply our color space transform to our footage on a node we can select Apple Log and Rec 2020 and it'll be converted to Rec 709 gamma 2.4. The DaVinci Resolve color space transform is a very powerful tool and you can go in and out of different workloads and pipelines. However in my experience the DaVinci Resolve Color Space Transform is a very scientific tool. When I say scientific, I mean that it's not really taking into account aesthetics of your footage, visual interest, and creating kind of a human looking 
um, creative style on your footage. Obviously, you can do those things after you apply the color space transform, but you're going to be spending extra time on the color grade when you do so. So in order to save time and not use color space transform, you can use conversion LUTs in place of that. This allows you to use my Apple Log to Rec. 9 LUTs, and not only does it give you more options in terms of looks, it also gives you creative styles that are built into the conversions. This saves you a lot of time in your workflow, and you can spend more time making creative decisions and less time making technical decisions. Using nodes in DaVinci Resolve also allows you to have complete control over the image, and you can perform adjustments like white balance, exposure, contrast, saturation before the conversion LUT is applied, and then you can make any other creative or other adjustments after the conversion LUT if you want to. Another benefit of having conversion LUTs that you can trust is that you can load them into your camera or your monitor. So if you shoot with the Blackmagic camera app, for instance, you can load LUTs into the viewing LUT section and that way you can preview the look as you're shooting. Right now, as I'm recording this, the Blackmagic app is a little bit uh, buggy and the LUTs don't look right, but I'm sure they're going to fix that in the future. You can also output via the USB-C port to HDMI to say a small HD camera monitor and you can load the LUTs onto that as well so that you can preview a normalized display referred image instead of having to look at the scene referred log image while you're shooting. This helps you make exposure adjustments and it also helps you perform things like nailing focus and just you know being able to make better overall creative decisions while you're shooting. Now here's some tips that I found as I was shooting the test footage with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I found that in the native camera app it actually does a pretty good job at exposing the log image. If anything I would say that it might expose it one or two steps stops over what I would have chosen myself, but this is pretty easily fixable by just tapping on one of the brighter portions of the image. You just have to be careful if you do that because you're also setting the focus point. So if you need to set the focus point and the exposure, unfortunately, I would probably just tap on the focus point and then you can use the little sun slider to drop the exposure a little bit. Unfortunately, I wish Apple gave us a few more pro tools when shooting in ProRes log, like a histogram on the bottom would be really nice. And the ability to maybe not shoot in ProRes HQ and throttle all of our hard drives and SD cards. But these issues are easily solved by shooting in the Blackmagic camera app, which allows you to shoot in ProRes 422, ProRes LT, and even H.265 all in Apple Log. It also allows you to make exposure adjustments in full manual control if you're using an ND filter, which I recommend for iPhone footage because you want to get that nice smooth motion blur. If you're new to shooting with log footage, I would recommend just letting the native camera app do its thing with exposure and just trust that it's going to nail it or get it close. Generally with log footage, it's better to underexpose than to overexpose because if you are getting highlights that are clipping on the top end, you're never going to get those back. Whereas if you have shadows, you can always bring those up. And luckily the Apple log footage that I've tested so far, even in slightly low light conditions has been relatively clean. Unless you're shooting at night, you wanna be careful about lifting the shadows too much. But overall, there has been very low noise. I actually do recommend plugging in a SSD or an SD card into the USB-C port, not because I want to shoot in 4K60 necessarily, but it's more so the fact that I don't want the files living on the phone itself. I say this because whenever I get back to Wi-Fi and my phone tries to start uploading all of that footage to iCloud, it causes a big mess and I don't like my phone working that hard and I don't want everything on that iCloud storage anyways. A lot of the creative looks in this pack are kind of film emulations or filmic styles. Um, those are really what I tend towards in my color grades and I think they look really good on the iPhone. Those looks are really well paired with some nice grain, some nice halation, maybe a little bit of blur and flicker. And I think once you add those elements, it's even harder to distinguish the iPhone from a regular mirrorless or DSLR camera. I'm definitely not alone in the fact that I feel like the iPhone 15 Pro recording in ProRes Log has sparked a new wave of a lot of creativity. I've talked to a lot of friends who have just been blown away by how good the image looks coming out of the iPhone. And it really feels like they have opened the door to us using the iPhone as a professional filmmaking tool. 
I talked about it in my last video. If you wanna watch it, I'll link it below. I think they have answered a ton of our questions and a ton of the asks that I had um, have actually been answered. So I'm really excited about that as well. I'm super excited to see what everyone does with these LUTs. I think it's going to make the process a lot easier. It's going to give you more flexibility in your workflow. And I think it's going to make it overall a more enjoyable process. Let me know if you use them and tag me in your footage. I'm on Instagram as Evan J. Schneider, Twitter as well. And yeah, I'm excited to see what you guys do with them and I'll see you in the next one.